some of the ideas that are popular in your side of politics uh, would seem to take us back to the Dark Ages, Georgia, new abortion laws, uh, which you are much in favor of, uh, that uh, a woman who miscarries could get 30 years. A Georgian woman who travels to another state for an abortion procedure could get 10 years. These are extreme hard policies. Well, okay, a couple of things. One, I'm not sure, I mean, frankly, I don't know whether you're, are you an objective journalist or are you an opinion journalist? I'm a Just journalist that asks questions. Okay, so you're, in a, you're a supposedly objective journalist calling policies with which you disagree barbaric and no, suggesting I... only one side of the political aisle. Has ideas, so I just want to point Look, out that, no, I, know that I wish, you would, I wish I, you would at least be honest in your own biases. Uh, Mr. So Shapiro, are, 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 you, are you a member of the thing in America is now so polarized that on one program you only have the left, and another one you just have the right. My job well, is to question those who have strong views and put an alternative to them. If you were an anti-abortion anti well anti person, I would be putting pro-abortion questions to you, but you are really would you, would you, would you call the pro-choice position? So, so, so why don't so you just answer this. my question? Sir, sir, I'm happy to answer your question. Please answer this one. Would you suggest, would you suggest that a late term abortion is brutal? I'm not taking a is view on this issue. I'm to allow asking you the questions. Sir, you just suggested the pro-life position is inherently brutal and terrible. So I'm asking you as an objective journalist, would you ask the same question to a pro-choice advocate by what, calling what their I'm, position brutal and horrible? What I'm asking you is that why is it that a bill banning abortions after a woman has been pregnant for six weeks is not a return to the dark ages? What's your answer? My answer is something called science. Human life exists at conception. It ought to be protected. Now, back to my question to you. You purport to be an objective journalist. BBC purports to be an objective down the middle network. It obviously is not, it never has been, and you as a journalist are proceeding to call one side of the political aisle ignorant, barbaric, and sending us back to the dark ages. Why don't you just say that you're on the left? Is uh, this so hard for you? Why can't you just be honest? <laughs> Mr. Seriously, Shapiro, I, it's a serious question. Mr. Shapiro, if you only knew how ridiculous that statement is, you wouldn't have said it. So let's move on. Now, you're a star of new media, of conservative new media. Uh, you and others on the left and the right, you position yourselves as supposed tellers of hard truths. But haven't you all just really coarsened public discourse in America and exacerbated its divisions? You know, it's kind of odd to be to be hearing about me coarsening public discourse when you call policies you disagree with brutal and bringing us back to the dark ages, sir. Uh, the point I don't want to return to, it, but the point was to put a position for you to reply to it, and I thought we'd that, covered uh, yeah, that. that. That's. Well, well, I, I'll I put think some of the points too, because on your your, your videos, characterization of issues is part of the problem in the well, coarsening of public debate. Well, maybe it's also part of your problem too, because we have from your YouTube videos, Ben Shapiro destroys the abortion argument. Ben Shapiro destroys trans transgenderism and abortion. Is that not a kind of coarse public discourse? Well, are those videos labeled by me? I have no idea. But why are you picking out? Why are, why are you? Why are you? I have a question. Why are you picking out random YouTube videos you, put up by people who are not me? Are you and then attributing uh, the titles to me? Are you unhappy with the way they've been described? I think that people can describe me however they please. It's a free country, and I'm all in favor of a public, of a public debate. If you watch the actual clips, they are generally civil conversations between me and somebody who disagrees with me. As you say in your book, you say that there's quite a key phrase: "We are so angry at each other right now." But as I say, on you part of that anger? Aren't you encouraging that anger? For example, you, des you described Mr. Obama's State of the Union address in 2012 as fascist mentality in action. Well, I think that if you, are want, if you want to argue with the characterization, then we can talk about what exactly his State of the Union address said. Is it charged language in politics? Sure. The problem that I have is not with charged language in politics, which I'm generally in favor of. I like a robust public debate and a very loud and, and, and spirited public debate. I have no problem with that whatsoever. What I'm talking about is the assumption 
that people with whom we disagree politically are inherently of bad character or, in your words, want to bring us back to the dark ages. But again, it was your description of the State of the Union address in 2012 as fascist. That's the wording of, of President Trump's 2012 address was bad and wrong. That's all. There are plenty of things that are bad and wrong, but it doesn't make them fascist. Well, I suppose that's true. But if you would like to, again, if you'd like to read me the column out loud, I suppose I can critique it for you. Oh, well, again, with Mr. Obama, you said, Jew, and you're, you're Jewish yourself. I only mention that because to put this in context. The Jews who vote for Obama are, by and large, Jews in name only. Ginos, you call them. My statement was based on the fact that Jews in the United States, as an ethnic group, are largely irreligious, which is true by every single poll. Jews are the most irreligious group in the United States. As an Orthodox Jew who actually takes Judaism seriously, the point that I am making is that most Jews who are ethnically Jewish are not religiously Jewish no. in any context. No, no, no. The point you were making is that Jews who vote for Obama are Jews in name only. I said, I said that, yes, that is correct, that Jews yeah. who voted for Barack Obama, a progenitor of the Iran deal, a person who was cracking down on religious liberty, a person who spent much of his career as president of the United States attempting to deprive Israel of the necessities to defend itself, that, that people, Jews who voted for President Obama, by and large, cared about Judaism far less than they did about other priorities. Did you say they should Correct. turn their badge in as a Jew? Uh, yes, I believe that if you are a, I believe that if you are somebody who takes Judaism seriously, that comes along with ideological, ideological commitment. I mean, I guess. The, also, I'm just. I mean, I, I mean, I, I hope you're having fun. By the way, going through every old tweet that I've ever sent to try and do gotcha questions. But if you'd like to have a discussion about my general philosophy or things I've done in say, I don't know, that was 2012, so it's now 2019. If you'd like to discuss something I've done in say like the past five years, why don't we do that? How about well, that? Well, because your book is uh, a criticism of. Uh, how angry America is and how America has to do better. And I'm simply I have an entire list out, on my website, sir. Sir, on I, my list, I have an entire website of I'd, dumb, I'm bad things that I've said. I'm simply trying to point out some of the things you, you've said that seem to me to help to stoke that anger. For example, you said sure. Israelis like to build, Arabs like to bomb crap and live in open sewage. Well, as I say in an article entitled, here's a list of all the giant, bad, dumb things I've ever said. Was that, that, was that includes, dumb? What, Yes, that's a dumb tweet. And not only, but it is also important to mention that the next few tweets clarify that that tweet is specifically referring to the Hamas leadership, which, no. by the way, a BBC I've, I've seen is relatively reticent no. to condemn. No, actually, it wasn't what you went on to do and say, uh, you are correct about the slur and our Arabs. It's not all Arabs that want to live in open sewage and blow things up. It's just Palestinians, you went on to say. No, it, no, it, and, no, and it says you the said, ones who take sides and against Israel in the Israel-Palestinian Israel -Palestinian conflict. And then you said the population is rotten to the core, you went on to say. Not Hamas, I say by, the yeah, Palestinian I say by, Arab population. I say that by poll numbers, they elected Hamas. They elected Hamas. They educate their children in school that Israel should be obliterated, sir. I guess... If you want to read... Con you know, honestly, uh, th this is a giant waste of time in the sense that the entire interview is designed for you to shout slogans or old things that I've said at me. I don't see how this forwards the debate. You talk about, you talk about undermining the public discourse. It seems to me that simply going through and finding lone things that sound bad out of context and then hitting them with and then hitting people with them is a way for you to make a quick buck on BBC off the fact that I'm popular and no one has ever heard of you. Uh, there are not many bucks to be made on the BBC, unlike American broadcasting, Mr. Shapiro. Uh, I get, the point You're I'm trying hate, to make seems. is that your words are hardly designed to produce the consensus and understanding that the book seems to want to produce. Uh, that's my point, that you write about you know, Judeo-Christian culture and so on, but so much of what you've said in the past would seem to turn its back on Judeo-Christian culture. You're lecturing me on Judeo-Christian culture after you call the pro-life position barbaric? I, I just really? asked you a question. 
and I asked you a question, you failed to answer a single one of mine. Frankly, well, I find this whole thing a waste of time. If you want to read the book and critique the book, why don't you read and critique the book? If you want to read, if you want to critique me, you can think whatever you want of me. Why don't you frankly, just try and I don't answer care. the I don't, I don't frankly give a damn what you, you think of me since I've never you, heard of you. You, and I've never heard of you until I briefed myself for this, but that's not the issue. You have a then new why the book hell are you interviewing and it's, me, an in, it's an interesting book. But my point is, your book claims that society... Well, it would be society, nice if you would quote it from time to time. Your book is... Well, actually, I've done so several times, and I'm about to do so again, if you would let me just finish the question. Your book now, frankly, claims I don't that think society this, you know honestly, is turning honestly, its back sir? on Judeo-Christian values. Yeah, this is, what are those values? What, considering what, what are the values it's turning its back on? I... I you know, I, I'm not inclined to continue an interview with a person as badly motivated as you as an interviewer. So I think we're done here. I appreciate your time. All so right. Thank well, so uh, thank you for your time and uh, for showing that anger is not part of American political discourse. Now, Mr. Shapiro, we'll say goodbye. <laughs>